Great. Hello, my name is Kelly Blumenthal. I am the acting director of the IAU's Office for Astronomy Outreach, and welcome to this interview series. Um, we are doing this in honor of our LGBTQIA plus astronomers and in honor of the UN Free and Equal and the GLAAD anti-bullying campaign called Spirit Day. Um, so this week, we are highlighting some amazing stories of perseverance and activism from queer astronomers around the globe. So here with us today is Nargis Mamavala, um, a Pakistani-American professor of astrophysics and the dean of the School of Science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States. So Nargis, thank you for being here. It's so nice to have you today. Thank you very much, Kelly. It's good to be here. Um, so... My first question for you, and I really encourage you to brag as much as possible, um, is to just tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself. What's your story? Um, you know, what are you the most proud of in your career? Yeah. So my my story, very briefly, is I was uh, uh, born in Pakistan and grew up there. I came to the United States to uh, as an undergraduate to go to college, and then I I did my graduate degrees here, and I've been living here ever since. Uh, I um, I have all all of my degrees are in, in physics and or astronomy. Uh, and I have been working uh, on a quest to, for the first time, detect gravitational waves since I was a graduate student uh, uh, at MIT. And, uh, and so, you know, the, the thing, the moment that I'm most proud of in my career is that since I was a graduate student, I have been uh, working on uh, precision instruments that would be capable of detecting these very faint vibrations that pa uh, that pass through our universe uh, called gravitational waves. And uh, in 2015, for the very first time, our instruments, which I've been working on for 25 years, um, made their first detection of these uh, very elusive waves. And uh, and that, uh, I mean, I, I think nothing else in, in, in my career uh, sort of could could crown uh, could crown that to you know work on something for so long to have many many milestones along the way of building an instrument that's capable of measuring with the precision of ten to the minus eighteen meters so about a thousandth the size of a proton um, and then to actually have nature um, do its thing nature the thing we were looking for was is is the collision of two black holes. And because they're black holes, they don't really give up light, but they give up these gravitational waves because of their enormous amount of gravity. And we were able to detect these gravitational waves as these two black holes collided. There was really no other way you could see them other than through their gravity. And so, so I, I think that was you know, certainly the thing I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of as a moment in, in, my, uh, in my career, even though there were many you know, other sort of smaller milestones and discoveries along the way. I, I would say one other thing, if I look at the span of my career as, as a physicist and an astrophysicist, probably the thing I am most proud of is, is the, 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 the students that I've worked with and, and the different places that, that they have taken me both intellectually and interpersonally. <laughs> That's really amazing. It must be so satisfying to see something like that come to fruition uh, and to see it evolve too through your students as well. Um, yeah. So what has been your experience as a part of the LGBTQI plus community um, in astronomy and astrophysics and physics um, and maybe also public engagement as well if you're engaged with that? Um, and how has this changed over time? Yeah. I you know, so I, I I sort of came out uh, as as queer in um, I came out as queer in uh, the mid nineteen nineties, and at the time, I would I would say it was uh, still a pretty uh, it was both unsafe and certainly on the fringes of society to be a, you know, a, 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 a queer person, uh, even in a professional setting um, or at a university. I was a graduate student at the time. And one of the things that was very striking to me at, at the time was that there really were, I had, I knew literally nobody else in physics or astronomy who I could 
look at as 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 a, a queer person or even suspect as a uh, as, as as a queer person. My uh, my uh, you know my partner at the time was actually um, uh, in in law school, and there was an incredible contrast between you know being in graduate school uh, in physics and being uh, in in law school, where in law school there was a much more visibility of, of, of queer people. There was, there was language around it. There were events around it. So I socially, I, 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 was, I had, was adopted into that world. And, and it wasn't until probably almost 15, 20 years later that you kind of, you know, having, you know, having the ability to express your, the queerness of your identity uh, in astronomy and physics settings was more more natural. Now, for my own self, you know, from the moment I I, I, I recognized this in myself, and I came out in, in you know I was openly queer in my in my group, uh, in in my physics labs, and in you know, and I, I there was no there was no there was no uh, negative consequences to that at all. So it wasn't like I had some terrible you know, uh, threatening or, or, you know, career altering experience. It was just, there weren't any, there wasn't anyone else around who could be, who I could, you know, be, who's, who were part of my world. Um, and, and that has really changed. I think now all of the major professional societies, physics and astronomy have, have caucuses in, in, in this space. And there are people who, who, who are active and on, on many university campuses, students can see faculty who are, who are openly, uh, openly gay, and and that's I think all all for the better because I you know it's it can be very isolating to to be the only person even if it's not threatening. Yeah, absolutely, and I will say you know the the experience in the United States is certainly that there's all of these groups and um, you know all the professional societies have these things, but. Um, Elsewhere, the the situation is markedly different. Um, yes, yes. In many places, yeah. and in even certain in even certain parts of the U.S., I think it is still threatening. You know, yes. I mean, I I think I think you know, certainly it can put your career and even your personal safety on the line. Uh, to, you know, to be openly queer. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a very good point. Um. So. How do you think astronomy could or should change to be a safer space um, for the future generations of queer astronomers? Um, particularly with such a public facing job, uh, how do you think um, you could do this better in your own work and the work that you do with your students um, and various you know, other aspects of your professional life? Yeah, so I, I think one of the, one of the things that is really quite simple to do is is to is to share with your community that this is part of your identity that queerness is part of your identity because i think it's very important for other lgbtqia plus people to to see people like themselves Whose careers haven't been derailed by 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 their 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 identities, whatever the, the the multiplicity of identities are that we we carry and the intersectionality of it, and to be able to say say wow okay you know I mean you know this is a successful person in my field and they're queer and so it's possible to have both things. So I think that's the first thing is just visibility and acknowledging uh, that it's possible uh, uh, to you know, to, to be sort of an existence proof, if you will. Uh, I think the other piece of it is to understand a little bit more, what are the challenges that people face? You know, I have in my own career had really, as far as I can tell, faced no particular challenge, significant challenges from being, being queer, but I also had the luxury of choosing carefully institutions where I knew that would be the case. And not everybody has that possibility. So I think that's the other thing is we also, on, on the individual level, be yourself, be out if it's safe and let other people uh, sort of, you know, aspire to that. Uh, on, on, on a systemic level, it's really, you know, 
trying to effect change at our institutions that will make it them safer and more inclusive for everybody. And, 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 and I think that's sort of the work that we all have to do, but the more people are in positions of influence, the more important it is for them to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you touched upon this need for role models, which is so deeply important for, I think, everybody along the way, but in particular, the people who are just starting out. Um, so in that vein, actually, I'd like to ask, um, if you could go back in time uh, to when you first started pursuing a career in physics or astronomy, um, what advice would you give yourself? <laughs> On a very technical level, the advice I would give myself is do more math. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, look, I, I, I think, I, I think, you know, my, my path has, has, is different from other people's paths. So, you know, for, for my own self, um, I, I really wouldn't do very much, very, very differently. You know, I, I struggled like many people did with, you know, at times with, with, you know, just even with academic requirements, got through it. So if there was any advice I would give myself, it would be stick with it. You know, it's not always linear. It's not always smooth sailing. Um, but if you really like, if you really love it, it you know, it you know, you should do it. So that would be the the you know the uh, advice I would give myself. Um, I wanted to um, uh, go back to one other you know question of role models and just share a little. A uh, little story uh, with you. So when I was um, uh, a postdoc at at Caltech, because this was you know probably five years after you know coming out myself, which I did as a graduate student, and I was one of these people who carefully researched before going to Caltech if this was a good place for 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 me and my partner in terms of benefits and just in terms of acceptance, and it really was, and I was very pleased with that, and and so on, and. I was just, I was doing what I do and I'd you know, gotten to know a number of people in my lab, but I was relatively new there still. When I got a, uh, someone left on my desk a card with my name on it, handwritten, and I opened it up and it was a card from a colleague of mine, someone I knew, I didn't know very well, but someone I knew, who basically wrote me a thank you card for being so comfortable and visibly queer because that had given him the confidence to try that himself, and would I like to go out to dinner with him and his partner? And I you know I was just stunned by that because first of all, I had no clue he was struggling with this. I, the second was just by being myself, something good had come out of this. And the third was that you know a university, you know Caltech at the time we, ha had a role to play in this, whereby you know already in the nineteen nineties positioning itself as a place where this was uh, acceptable. And so it was just an uplifting story of, that I've had to share. That is really lovely, actually. <laughs> I'm like kind of tearing up a little bit. <laughs> um, so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I guess my final question for you, and you might have answered it maybe in your previous previous question, but do you have any advice? for future generations of LG, LGBTQIA plus astronomers or any final thoughts in general? Yeah, I, I think it's what I said earlier. If it's safe for you to do both, you know, in, in from the outside world and from your own emotional uh, uh, state, uh, be visible to others because they're looking for, uh, they're looking to us to see themselves. Thank you. I think that's a really great message to leave leave us on today. So thank you um, very much for being with us today. I really appreciate your time. Um, if uh, you have any links that you'd like to share, you can just let me know and I can uh, put it in the uh, description with this video. Um, but thank you all for joining us today and I will see you for the next one. Thank you very much, Kelly. It's a pleasure.